All right, well, we are going to be making this top folding card. And um, if you've been watching my videos for the last month or so, I've been telling you that I'm really trying to use um, all of the products that I have uh, purchased from uh, the occasions, the uh, annual catalog, things like that before they retire. So today we are going to be using, hey, good morning, Diana, or good afternoon, Diana. Um, we are going to be using uh, this bundle right here. It's called Charming Cafe. And where's the, here's the framelits right here. So you can, I think, yeah, there is a bundle that you can save 10%. Uh, this is in the Occasions catalog. It's on page 25. And um, this is a retiring set, so this will not be carrying over. So um, I, I, went ahead and used um, the sentiment I I'm a lot I'm lucky to have a friend like you but really um, I thought that it would be a beautiful Mother's Day card as well so you could very easily um, change up the sentiment and um, have it be a Mother's Day card but I wanted to show you this just because like I said I have not had the opportunity to use it yet and um, I just think this card really turned out cute. Now, this is kind of similar in the same design that I did earlier this week. And, you know, sometimes I like to do that um, when, uh, you know, you may be struggling, kind of have a, um, you know, a, a block, a mental block, creativity block. Um, if that happens, then I don't, I'm not necessarily saying that's what happened here, but I just wanted to show you that if you've made something that you really like, all you have to do is just make some very um, minor changes changes to it and um, it is a it is a different card it has kind of the same uh, design elements but um, you know it's it's a different card different shape different sentiments things like that so anyway but before I go on any further I want to announce last time's I Stampin live giveaway winner so that was two weeks ago today because last Friday I was heading up to Atlanta to go to on stage so as a reminder, if you um, click on the share button right below the text box, uh, you will be entered into next week's giveaway. So just make sure that you type in shared in the comment box so that I know that you did that. And um, you'll be uh, entered into next week's giveaway, like I said. But this week's winner is Mary Beth Robeson. So very uh, congratulations, Mary Beth. This is the uh, gift that you'll be getting. Um, it's a nice spool of ribbon. I used the same sentiment that we're going to be using today. And then what I did here is I used um, this punch. This punch right here, I think we call this the pretty label punch. And what I did is I cut it in half because I wanted to extend it. Um, I wanted to make it wider than what it is. So that's a neat little uh, tip for y'all. If you, if you like a particular shape of a punch or whatever, a die cut and things like that, and if it's not large enough for what you're wanting, consider or see if you can cut it in half and extend it, make it longer, make it wider, you know, whatever you need to do. So, um, hey, Mary Beth, you may have just uh, missed it, but you are my winner for uh, the giveaway um, from two weeks ago. So congratulations. I'll be getting this out in the mail to you. And um, so uh, there you go. So like I said, just consider, you know, with the punches and things like that, you can always just cut it in half. And that's what I did with this one. <laughs> okay, great. I'm glad you saw that, Mary Beth. Alrighty, so we'll get back to this card. Um, let me see, uh, any other house, oh, um, my customers who will be receiving, um, either the, uh, the gold, uh, faceted gems or my free gift for the month of March because you use the hostess code, those gifts will be going out, um, tomorrow, Monday at the latest. So you should be receiving those soon. So just wanted to update y'all on that. Okay. So the first thing that we are going to do is start off with a piece of creme cake cardstock. And I've cut this a little bit differently. I made this a top folding card, which, you know, sometimes I just like to change things up. So this is actually four and a quarter by um, 11 inches. 
And then I've already scored this at five and a half, so that's how we get our top folding card. So it's gonna be like that. And then what I did is I've already cut down and embossed our panel. So this is another piece of crumb cake cardstock. This measures four and a quarter by, oh, excuse me, four by five and a quarter. And I used our ruffled embossing folder. I just had it. Oh, here it is. So this is one of those 3D embossing folders, so it's really thick. And it's just a very subtle uh, ruffle um, on the card. It's a very subtle embossed pattern. But um, it's really neat. I haven't, again, I haven't used this uh, very much. But this is carrying over, so don't, don't think that this is retiring. Um, but I just thought that would be really fun to add that to the front of the card. Kind of feminine with it being, um, you know, this is, you know, like a little Parisian cafe scene. So I thought the ruffles were just a, a really fun uh, effect, you know, to give it a little bit of feminine charm. And I did put quite a bit of a snail on the back of the uh, panel just because it is, uh, embossed. I want to make sure that it's well adhered. So how's everybody's Friday? Y'all have big exciting plans this weekend? Are you laying low? Seems like our weekends, we never really have a whole lot planned, but for some reason they get super busy. I'm not quite sure how that happens. <laughs> okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to stamp um, on our uh, watercolor paper. You're crafting all week. Oh, that sounds good, Mary Beth. So this is just a piece of watercolor paper. And what I'm going to do is I am going to stamp these two images, this on top of here, and then I'm going to die cut it out before I start coloring. And I'm actually going to move this down just a little bit. So hopefully y'all can see this because this base always interferes with my stamping. Now, um, this would be a great time to pull out your Stamparatus when we are all able to order those um, when the new catalog comes out, but I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna wing this. I did pretty good. So I'm gonna get a test piece of paper because um, when I stamp this, I have to kind of angle the block. So I'm gonna stamp it a couple of times and make sure I, test, I get it right. This is kind of my way of making sure I stamp it right before I stamp it on the cardstock so I don't have to, so I don't screw it up. So I'm just using our Memento Tuxedo ink because I am gonna be doing some watercoloring. And let's see, it's just like a slight angle. Nope. Okay, maybe it's a slight angle to the right. Okay, that is it, and I just need to be a little bit straighter. Okay, there we go. I don't recommend doing it this way, but if you have to, it works. Okay. And I'm just, I'm going to try it again. Hey, Tammy. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, that's not too bad. If it's not perfect, that's okay. That's my goal is to get it as perfect as possible, but sometimes, you know, we have to let that perfection go. Okay, so now I'm inking up the little cafe scene, and I'm just gonna stamp it right below here. But like I said, with the Stamparatus, this won't even, we won't even have to worry about stuff like this anymore. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I am going to use our largest stitched uh, oval. And I'm gonna go ahead and die cut this out before I start coloring. So let me grab my Big Shot. So I have a question for y'all. I don't know if I've ever asked this question. What is your favorite type of card to make? I think that would be interesting to know. Or, and then after you answer that question, what is the type of card you make the most? So it doesn't necessarily have to be the same. 
So what card do you, what kind of card do you make the most? And then what is your favorite kind of card to make? Good afternoon, Sherry. And this will kind of help me doing a little bit of research while I'm crafting. And this will help me know what y'all would like to see for me. Because I definitely, whoops, this shifted. Because I definitely want to do things that you will find helpful and beneficial. So if you have to think about it, think about it and then let me know. You can just comment below. We can have a little discussion while I'm doing this. All right, so I've die cut that out. Let me put this off to the side. <laughs> well, I'm happy for you, Sherry. <laughs> You're too funny. Okay. And my sentiment is pretty crooked, but you know what? We're going to pretend like it's nice and straight. All right, so what I did is when I colored in my sample, I used watercolor pencils. And I like it, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a combination of my watercolor pencils and some ink pads. So um, the ink pads that I have pulled out are Crushed Curry, Soft Sky, and Pool Party. I don't know which one. This Soft Sky may be way too light because I want to kind of give this a watercolor wash like it looks like it's the sky like I did here. Um, I used uh, Coastal, not Coastal Cabana, look at me. I'm so excited about Coastal Cabana coming that I'm already saying it. I used Bermuda Bay, but I thought that was a little bright. So I want something a lot more softer, subtle. So Soft Sky may be too light. So I also pulled out Pool Party. So we're, we'll kind of experiment here on my live. So what I'm going to do is um, you can either press the ink pads together like this to get a pool of ink on the lid, or if you have the re-inker, you can always um, squeeze a few drops um, in the lid. So you have a couple of options to do it that way. I'm going to be using the Aqua Painter to do all of the coloring with the ink pads as well as the pencils. So I'm going to start off here just picking up some color. Yeah, this is gonna work perfectly. Okay, so I like Soft Sky. So I'm just gonna take my Soft Sky and just put a color wash just all over the top and then just gently color in behind the, the chairs and the table. Now Soft Sky is one of the retiring colors. It did not um, make the cut for the color revamp. So, if this is a color that you are sad to see, you'll want to pick up all of the cardstock and reinkers and stuff like that. Okay, so Diana says you make birthday cards the most and enjoy the challenge of making them for men. Oh, yeah. Have you gotten that that true gentleman suite? They have some really, you know, that that truly tailored um stamp set has some really nice uh, sentiments, you know, obviously for Father's Day, but also um, some kind of general ones that you can use for birthdays. Okay, so where's my paper towel? Oh, here's my paper towel. Okay, so what you'll do is just um, in between colors, just kind of wipe off. You can squeeze the water until it runs clear. Oh, and I don't know if I showed y'all this. I just kind of assumed y'all know how this works. So what you want to do before you start coloring, obviously, is unscrew the top and just fill the empty barrel with just tap water, and then just screw it back on, and then to get the brush tip wet, you'll just squeeze until you see drops coming out. And if your brush is ever too saturated, just wipe it on a paper towel, and that will remove some of the water. Okay, and Tammy said she likes to make Christmas cards are your favorite, but you can be so, yeah, you can be creative with them. The cards I make the most are holiday and birthday cards for my little granddaughters, ages three and five. Oh, congratulations on a three-month-old grandson. So I guess children cards are what I make the most. Yeah, yeah. Those, oh, Tammy, you are going to die. There's, um, I, I don't want to spoil it too much, but there's uh, some really, really cute stuff in the an annual catalog that um, will be precious for children. 
Um, well, here, I'll show this to you really quick. This is one of the stamps, stamp sets that we received at OnStage last week. Um, so when, when you go to OnStage, you, everybody gets a, a stamp set like in our bag. So this was the stamp set that we got. It's called Animal Outing. And there is a matching framelit set. So I was really excited about that. We didn't get the framelits. We just got uh, the stamp set. So that's a clear amount. Um, but, you know, just adorable coloring and just like the little wild about you and little one. And I think this frog sitting on that tree branch is just so cute. And then the little koala bear and the kangaroo pouch. So really, really cute set that may be great for kids. All right. Okay, so next, let me see. You know what? I think I'm gonna get a brown. Here, I'm gonna try crumb cake. And I'm going to do a color wash down here for the, the ground. Crumb cake may be too light, but we'll see. We'll see what happens here. I'm experimenting with y'all. Okay, so I'm picking up the color. And it's a little, it's kind of coming across green. Kind of like a khaki, you know how Khaki has like a greenish color to it, but maybe when it lightens up, it'll be a little bit more brown. Oh, you know what? I need to get my soft sky. I see that I forgot to put color behind that one chair. That's not too bad. I think that looks good. I think I'll, I'll be okay with that. Okay, let me... Color in here. Now for the chair and for the table, the really fine details, I am going to use my watercolor pencils. Um, well, I hope that they'll work. <laughs> I would not say I'm a professional by any means, Sherry. <laughs> Thank you for the compliment, but <laughs> oh my gosh. Let's see here. Okay, so I'm pulling out my watercolor pencils. I'm gonna use the basic gray. That's what I used for the table and chairs. So let's see how this works. Okay, so the watercolor pencils, you know, especially with these fine details, I do go ahead and just kind of color them in. And I have found for these um, small details uh, is to really make sure that your pencil is sharp and it really makes it a lot easier to um, color in. And I'm just, I'm going to leave the chair pad, this part right here, uh, a different color. Or I'm gonna leave it blank, I mean. I'm gonna color in it a different color. Okay. And come over to this chair and it doesn't take a whole lot of time to do this. The one thing that I like about the watercoloring is that it's, you know, it can be messy. Uh, so you don't feel like, you know, if you get out of the lines, it's not, you know, it's not the end of the world. It's not like your project is ruined. Um, and that's what I like about it. It's kind of like a, you know, it doesn't, it just doesn't have to be perfect, which for me is nice because You know, I don't feel like I need to throw a project away if it's not exactly. And the other thing that I like is because you color, um, you know, you're not you're not um, putting down the same amount of um, color when you're when you're putting it onto the paper. So it kind of gives it, it its own natural shading, which is really neat. And then when you when you spread it around, when you blend it with the aqua painter. It just naturally just kind of gives your project highlights, which is makes it even better. Now, if you you can go back in and add color if you feel like you need to. Let's 
So just finish this up here. And I really do like the subtleness of the sky and the ground a lot more um, using the ink pad rather than the, uh, the watercolor pencils. So I mean, like you can see, you, I just feel like it's a lot more subtle. Hopefully you can see the difference. Okay, now for the chair cushions, I'm going to color them, oh, wrong color. Um, I'm going to use uh, Calypso Coral because that's the accent color that I've chosen for the card. And I'm just gonna color in the seat cushion with that color. And just blend that in. Okay, and then for the, um, the cafe cups, the little um, latte, is that what those are? Those big coffee mugs? I'm not a coffee drinker, so I'm not sure. I think those are latte cups. I'm gonna use crushed curry. Um, well, what's this color? This is Daffodil Delight. Again, I just kind of wanted a, well, you know what, let's try this. Let's do Daffodil Delight. We'll see how this works. Just kind of wanted a, a brighter, a brighter color on the mugs. And, oh, for the flower, and the leaves, I mean, these are tiny, tiny details, but you can see them. Okay, let me, let me sharpen my rich razzleberry, buried under paper. I had a dear customer give this to me a couple of years ago and she passed away last year unexpectedly. And every time I use this, I always think of Sue. She was such a dear lady. I miss her a lot. She was so fun in class and always had great ideas and she's dearly missed. Okay, and then I'm gonna use Old Olive for the leaves. And I don't know what color to do the vase. Maybe I'll do, maybe I'll do just really, really light. Um, Calypso Coral. Hi, Rebecca. How are you today? I grew up in Texas. I lived in Plano. Went to Plano Senior High and went to school in East Texas at Stephen F. Austin, so it's nice to have a Texan on. Though I can't say I'm going to be a Texan much longer. I'm almost lived in Florida longer. It's so crazy. Okay, and then I'm just going to lightly just color in those leaves. I'll get it a little bit closer so that you can see here. I know these details are so small, but you may not be able to pick it up on camera. Hopefully you can see that. Whoops, here we go. How about this side? Is that a little bit better? Okay. All righty. There we go. Oh, you lived in Plano. My parents were just in Tyler over the weekend looking to see if they um, want to retire. Well, they already are retired, but move. Um, they're, they're in Georgetown right now, and uh, I think they want to get out of, out of that and head to East Texas. Okay, so what I've done now is I have um, die cut a, um, the largest scallop oval in Calypso Coral. So just get out your largest layering oval. And I am going to, uh, did I pop that up? It doesn't look like it. Okay, I'm going to use, um, I think I used tear and tape just because it's watercolor paper. So we're just going to put that right here. Yeah, I left Texas in 97, almost 98. That's when I got married. So, my gosh, I know the Dallas area has definitely changed. I can only imagine what Tyler looks like now. We drive through it going to school. Okay, so I'm going to burnish the back of the paper. 
And then I like to use my paper piercer to remove the paper, makes it a little bit easier. So when I use my nails, it seems like I, tear, I grab both the tape, the sticky part and the paper. Okay, and so let's just add that to the oval. Let's make sure that all of our scallops are good. Okay, and so let's bring in our card base again. Here it is. And I am going to pop this up on dimensionals. So just put a, a few around it. Okay. And then for the ribbon, I am using our Calypso Coral um, Ombre ribbon. That is a ribbon that is retiring. So um, that will not be in the new catalog. And so what I'm gonna do here, so if you haven't seen it, I love this. I think it looks like it's about a quarter inch. Yeah, it's a quarter inch wide. And I am just gonna tie a bow and we will attach this to the bottom of the little cafe scene. And again, because the ribbon is ombre, it gives it some dimension. So just really gives it a lot. Of, this card has a lot of interest with the subtle, the subtlety of the ribbon background. I don't like that. So the subtlety of the ribbon background and then obviously our cafe scene that we have um, watercolored and then the, the ribbon with its beautiful shading and just, you know, such a fun card. And it's really easy. You know, obviously this is, I'm being chatty while I'm making this. So it comes together. Whoops, there it is. It can come together even quicker. So, you know, a really nice, you know, if you just put a different sentiment um, up at the top, like we have some really pretty Mother's Day greetings, um, you could do that and just have a really pretty Mother's Day card for your daughter-in-law, for your mom, for your aunt, sister, friends, things like that. Oh, I need to cut this down. All right, and so there you go. So here's the original one that I made where I used strictly watercolor pencils. I think I like the softness of the inks better. So again, that was using Charming Cafe, which is in our Occasions catalog, and um, it does have a matching framelit set that really cuts out a lot of neat things, like it cuts out the little cafe scene, um, the little topiary, and then it cuts out this really pretty um, a floral frame. It cuts the outside and the inside, so there's really some neat components uh, to that, that bundle. But um, if you have any questions about anything that I used, you know, always comment below. I will have an edited video up later today along with the accompanying blog post. And don't forget to share this video to get into um, the drawing for next week. Now, next week, I will tell you, I am having my monthly card class. And um, so I Stampin' Live will be later in the day. I think um, we'll probably be like around 4.30. So um, I will update y'all. Um, just my class gets over at noon and there's just no way that I can <laughs> come on 30 minutes later. So, um, so next week, just pencil that in. It's going to be a little bit later. But um, I hope you liked the project. Um, again, don't forget that we I have a host code for the month of April, as well as a free card class. So when you make a purchase, you get those um, you get the card class for free, and then you will receive a free gift for me in the month of May, so mid May. And have a wonderful weekend. And if you have any questions, like I said, just reach out to me. Bye, guys.